Hello, everybody. Welcome to podcast number eight, Truly Inspirational People, Tips, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's this, this wonderful series that um, I've been creating over the last few months to bring more value to our Facebook page, um, to share interviews with you from individuals that I've met who have truly inspired me. They have amazing messages, um, very uh, deep rooted knowledge and um today's guest well I'd, i i want to say style and substance actually because his content the way that he describes things is is phenomenal and the level of experience that um, he has had in his life is very very powerful so um so our next guest actually calls himself an escape consultant and he gives people tools to get out of situations that no longer serve them um, I, he's uniquely talented. I have experience of this firsthand. We have also been working with this individual and he's a very creative professional and he actually draws on a deep knowledge, um, very diverse influences, very interesting background, very sophisticated understanding, able to pull all of these different concepts and ideas together um, into this wonderful treasure chest, I should say. Um, and he himself actually did get himself out of a huge crisis at his lowest and, and he'll share this story with you um, he was uh, he was in a mental hospital and um, before that he had actually been headhunted by a top London ad agency ad agency I should say and he was actually working for the BBC so uh, hello Adrian how are you Hello, Sunisa. That's um, that's my biography, isn't it? Or condensed version. It's it's weird to hear it like that. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, you you kind of have to be crazy to work in advertising. I think is one conclusion. Uh, no, I, I learned a lot from that. Uh, one of the things I learned was this is a situation that I need to escape, and that was a choice that I was not ready to make until it was forced on me by circumstances and the circumstance was the death of my brother and one consequence of that was um ultimately uh when i was you know away from that world and, and living in nottingham uh that's you know uh, there are there are kind of ripples from that and at the same time i had been uh on you know, a journey where I was already kind of open to the ideas of, of people like Robert Anton Wilson, who's a thinker who's had a huge influence on me. Um, and, you know, I'd done some meditation, I'd hung around with people from different kind of spiritual and magical traditions. Um, and, yeah, so the, 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 the mental health adventure was uh, a terrifying <laughs> but necessary one. And I think you can look at these things maybe. I mean, yeah, it was a, a drastic attempt to escape from a life that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I, I'd, I'd shown some evidence of being able to be a successful uh, writer. I had shown uh, promise in other respects, but, but there was just something fundamentally that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And the other side of that journey was was very much one of a kind of natural healing path mm. uh which wasn't intentional um but it drew on um yeah you know, i spent time uh recovering for, 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 for some time and then i started to do some voluntary work uh with a housing association which led to then working, I was a support worker at a hostel for homeless people uh, with you know, mental health and substance problems. Mm -hmm. And there was a kind of, yeah, regeneration really okay. at that point. Um, and what did you, I mean, when you were in your deepest sort of depths of, of despair with this, what, what do you think, what are some of the key things that you learned from this journey as you came back into the light, as we may say, but as you came back into... Well, I, I, I think what I recognised was that, 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 that yeah, I, I had lots of pieces, but I didn't have a, there wasn't a complete Adrian. Mm. Uh, and I got pieces which came from 
you know, my, my you know my parents who you know you know wonderful people, and, and there's, there's there's things I've I've kind of taken from them. There's things I've taken from a pretty messy experience of, of going to what was an apparently very good school, which was a very traumatizing place for me. There was the yeah, you got all that, and then I part of the journey as well has been doing a lot of training in and around NLP. Mm. Um, and while I did and do continue to find a lot of that material incredibly valuable, um, it wasn't really integrated within me in a way that was producing results. And, and I think there were some, if you like, fractures that I could see that were partly to do with that as well. Mm. Um, so do you mean so, you, were, you were learning the theory but it wasn't assimilating it wasn't integrating and, yeah, you, 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 yeah. You know, that could be one description of it or, or another might be that you can you can see there's a mismatch between uh, what is yeah the, the possibilities mm. that are open to you and the descriptions that are presented of how things go and uh, I think especially around NLP there is I mean, I've been very fortunate to train with some amazing people who kind of you know, did a lot of the origination of this, of this kind of work. But so there's a tendency to train at the level of technique where actually it's how can you use that awareness to be in the moment with someone rather than impose a framework on them, mm -hmm. what is true to them there and then. And that can work in all sorts of ways. So there's, there's a sort of fundamental thing which has started to veer to more and more. Uh, there's, I think there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's, I think there's, yeah, one thing would be that there's um, a good sort of capsule description is, you know, don't believe everything you think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know, just because something happens to be in your head, yeah, doesn't mean it's 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 a worthy or useful. Well, um, yes, yeah. things to, to maybe help. Well, that's really interesting. One of um, one of the um, so many years ago, I used to um, I was quite obsessed with there was an Ayurvedic um, spiritual teacher, and I used to go to all of his workshops whenever he was in yeah. London. I was the first one that would sign up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like a five year period. And I remember one of the light bulb moments being in being in his workshop, you know, and he said, um, you know, there's a huge difference between um, what did he say? Theory. Um, Basically, the, the understanding of something and the actual practice, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, yeah. um, and up until then, I think I'd just been reading lots of books, and, yeah, yeah. you know? And, and that just, that was like, it was like a huge shift, you know, when he said that. And, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's that, um, you know, in, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice. In mm -hmm. practice, there is. <laughs> and, uh, yes, yes. And to actually feel the knowledge, you know, this is, you know, at the end of the day. And, um, yeah, I, exactly. To, to have that, but also to have the, how can you suspend whatever models you've got mm. to allow yourself to work with someone in a way that's going to work for them? So yeah. I'll, I'll give you, for instance, there's a, and again, one basic principle from, from that is, um, essentially to treat what other people are saying as a literal description of what's going on for them. Right. And when I'm saying saying, I'm including non-verbal stuff as well. So right. there was a point where I worked with an artist who, for reasons that she couldn't understand, was just painting in different shades of the same colour, whereas she had been paint, painting with a full spectrum. Yeah. And I could have gone down the road of you know, asking all sorts of questions about that. Instead, I just noticed, and what I noticed was she was referring to a one arm and she was kind of pointing to a spot and saying, well, yeah, it's like there's a, there's like a, you know, kind of reservoir mm. of, of kind of ink and it kind of goes down into my, my fingers. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, okay, if that's the case, respecting where she's coming from here, so how about further up her arm, I suggested, mm -hmm. is a colour wheel. Mm -hmm. And with the colour wheel, she can allow herself to choose which colour goes into the reservoir. Yeah. So basically that opened her mind up to other ways. Yeah, and next day, she, next day she woke up and she was able to use all the colours again. Yeah. So there's like no need for any silly theories yeah. other yeah. than yeah. respecting where someone is yeah. and responding to it in their terms yeah. rather than mine. I didn't have to do a, anything other than yeah. just respond. So and again, you, it was yeah. and if, we, if we go back, so your journey of, of, of moving through this situation yeah. and then coming to where you are now, um, 
so you've mentioned NLP, you've mentioned the artist. So there's been a number of either tools or individuals that have come into your life to support you through this, this, I guess. Yeah, very, yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've been very fortunate. Um, and, and even on, on the NLP front, I've, I've been particularly fortunate that my, I guess my two main mentors, I've got a very rich life outside nlp mm -hmm. uh, i think one of the one of the things i'm not so keen on with nlp is it's at one level it, it becomes a kind of pyramid selling scheme as a right. lot of these things do yeah. um and i've never wanted to go down that road anyway and i was very fortunate that the people who were two of my primary trainers michael breen and eric robbie uh michael had got a lifelong immersion in the buddhist tradition and also uh, is very knowledgeable about the Western Western magical tradition, mm. and Eric was a uh, a genius kind of wordsmith who had been a journalist, a magazine editor, and publisher, um, and also his particular approach to NLP is is is, is quite beautiful, and mm. it and it starts with sensory awareness, mm. and his his approach to that derives from uh you know long-standing stuff in martial arts traditions mm. um and again i think that's that's kind of i took a lot from that because if you start off at the level of being able to just be more aware mm. of the person you're with then the solution starts to create itself mm. from that awareness rather than an imposition of whatever the flavor of the week model is yeah but what you're talking about here is, is it's the mind and the body system. Oh, it's, so, it is. It is yeah, absolutely. And, and all of these and things. Movement and the energy. A absolutely. And the meditation yeah. is the awareness and bringing the awareness in. So Absolutely. And, I, and I've done work with body workers of, of different yeah. persuasions. Um, you know, Feldenkrais work, uh, acupuncture, yeah. uh, you name it. People doing uh, uh, you know, whatever energy may, may be. I, I have plenty of experience of it. And, you know, that. Is, is kind of part of the toolkit as well. So all of these things go together. Yeah. So Adrian, the escape consultant, is there anything that you would change in, um, in how this journey has weaved for you to come from where absolutely you were in the hospital to where you are now? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's, it's been absolutely nightmarish at times, but, um, you know, if that's what it takes to to get to a better place yeah. and to be fundamentally happier and more fulfilled, mm. then so be it. And, and that is, that is absolutely fine. And that, uh, yeah, I think that matters to me more than, more than anything. And, um, along the way, I, yeah, any notions of kind of, I mean, I do have, let's say goals or outcomes or whatever, but some of those have shifted over time as I discover more about myself, which I think is important. Yeah, 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 every day, every day changes. That is yeah. something actually I'm curious about. So um, it, as you go through this huge process of change and, and really massive evolution and, and transition in yourself, do you, did you, did you seek the kind of tools and the different things that you brought into your life or did they find you? How did you <laughs> it's both. And it is, uh, I mean, I've been reading recently about retro causation, yeah. which is the notion that events in uh, the future can affect the past, um, which itself is a notion I was introduced to probably like 20 years ago by a mentor who was a, a former psychiatric nurse, uh, adept in kind of magical and shamanic traditions mm. uh who you know who studied time uh, at a at a kind of doctoral level um yeah i mean I, I draw on very broad influences and i i kind of play with things uh but i think fundamentally what i want to come back to there's a okay oh I'll, I'll, yeah um it's interesting to see how ideas gain currency in different forms sometimes so at the moment you know the last few years i've been hearing a lot of people talk about manifestation and and i don't necessarily have a problem with that but i think there's a fuller picture mm. that people need to be aware of to kind of uh understand some of these things not that i'm saying i do however and i can remember one particular instance where where there's, there's someone i was i was i was friendly with who is de describing how she and a friend go to the beach and they manifested a couple of guys there. Great. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking well, okay. And I'm wondering if 
for the guys, did they have a conversation where they say, we totally manifested those women? Like, yeah, who get, yeah, I think there's a sort of arrogance yeah. about that. Yeah, and it's then, different, isn't it? Whether it's the male or the female who actually says that, we look at well, that. Abs- yeah, exactly. And then if you start to look at wider stuff around this, there's a guy called Dean Radin who I recommend reading. He's an authority on, if you like, the sort of scientific side of how uh, sort of psi phenomena work. And he's done lots of stuff on this. Yeah. And at some point, Dean Radin... He, not many people know where he is at this point in his life. He's kind of given up one part of his life. He's now got a little unit in a kind of, one of these kind of startup type places. Mm. And he's just kind of setting up there and he's mapping out on a whiteboard the things that he would like to have in this new office slash lab, etc. And he's been doing that for some time. And one day <coughs> there is a knock at his door. And there's, a, there's, there's, there's someone there who he doesn't recognise. He goes, you're Dean Radin? Mm. Says, yes. Says, I've been looking for you. Says, yes. And it turns out this guy, as he, was, he, was, he was involved in Apple. He took a ton of money from Apple. And what he's always wanted to do is do some sort of commercially based sort of sci company. Mm. And he's just been on a retreat where one of the things he's been looking to manifest is Dean Radin to be on the board of his company. Now, he is, he's got the next unit to Dean Radin in this building, it turns out. So Dean goes around to visit this guy. Now, in this guy's space, he has exactly the chairs, exactly the laboratory equipment, and exactly the other things that Mm -hmm. Dean has been noting on his whiteboard. On his vision board. Wow. Now, at that point, who manifested who? Yeah. Okay, so if, then if you go back to the Sufi tradition, mm. uh, you then get the notion of, there's, there's, there's a story about you know, the Mullah Nasruddin, uh, which, which, which kind of ends up saying, so, well, I'm here because of you, you're here because of me. Mm. And that, as a wider thing, I think is, is maybe not a bad place to kind of wrap up here, because it's that sort of social concern, which really, really interests me more and more around, you know, we talk about personal developments, but, mm. you know, let's look at those wider communities that we're part of affect mm. and are affected by mm. um Amazing. So. it's a it's a it's a, and it is it's a lot to think about and 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 in 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 the ancient in the traditional um systems um you know we talk about how um so we don't use the word manifestation but we would mm. say that you know the teacher turns up when they're meant to and um yeah, yeah. there's this energy energy exchange and and it's and it's kind of already decided before we you know enter this life we we, you know before the energy the prana comes into our bodies so you know these are all things that we've all talked about these things in different ways in different systems and um and but i guess the whole manifestation thing is a way of making it current is a way of yeah sure it's 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 a yeah it's a mainstream level yeah, it's, it's a 21st century yeah. friendly way of doing it and yeah you know and yeah, yeah, yeah. the reality is it's yeah it's working on a very very subtle level and it's yeah not, absolutely and, and uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's not just writing in the in the in the journal it's 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 on um you know another another level of the way that we're working but what i wanted to do was just find out a bit more about so from your experience this absolutely amazing journey you do now coach others you are an estate yep. consultant you I work am. on one-to-one basis you work with groups um adrian tell us a bit about that what does that look like quite often uh it, it can take different forms um i mean before now it's ended up with people like dancing on tables in conference rooms um that's been quite fun um and more and more i'm I'm kind of you know nature is is kind of more and more part of what interests me at this moment uh and has been for some you know months now i'm kind of increasingly interested in spaces and how the if you like the energy the spirit the whatever the character of a place affects who we are and how we are with ourselves and with each other uh, so increasingly what I've been doing is, you know, going for walks with people in a park or along a river, um, having concert, con- you know, convers- I was doing that earlier today, in fact, having conversations and uh, just seeing where they lead. 
okay. uh, and sometimes there can be a specified outcome for that um, where if you like it's, it's 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 that thing the difference between I know I need to escape from this and how do we do it versus I don't know what the hell this is, <laughs> but, <laughs> but can we do something no, with it? going on. <laughs> exactly. And I, you know, either of those I can work with, but I think I'm particularly yeah. useful around that, where I think because I've kind of played with quite a few things myself, um, you know, and I've worked with some pretty tricky customers in, you know, when I was doing the hostel support work, you know, they're not kind of like nice, polite clients who will, who will, who will like nod differentially. Yeah. Uh, they are potentially, uh, you know, as, as happens, yeah, people who might want to start fights with bus drivers mm. and stuff like this. So, <laughs> you know, that, you know, so yeah. again, that, that kind of responsiveness to what's happening is, is, is you know, is, is kind of important. And, um, and how, and, uh, yeah, through, I mean, different to so say different clients, different courses for courses, you might say. How do you yeah. think? Um, what have you found? What have you found some of the best ways um, are for people to learn to, 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 to start to bring? You know, I, I like the idea of taking somebody therapeutically for a walk and actually having mm. a conversation. And I actually yeah, I don't yeah. think I know any therapists or practitioners that actually use that as a, as a tool. It's quite okay. unique. So. Well, I, I, it started when I, uh, a few years ago, there was someone who came up to spend a day with me from down south. And I thought, all oh, right, if he's coming all that way, we'd better do something special. Mm -hmm. And I didn't just want to kind of sit having coffees all day. So I thought about, I knew roughly what his outcomes were and what he was about. So I thought, well, okay, if I take him to these like four different places mm -hmm. over the course of a day in Nottingham, which mm -hmm. one way or another metaphorically resonate with what he's about. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be an interesting thing to do. And it, and it was kind of worked really, really nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, also, coincidentally or not, introduced me to someone who was like re really, you know, important for other things that started to happen for me. Um, and again, anything that breaks some of those set formats, you know, where it's like two of you talking and you've, 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 you've kind of, you know, you've got, specific outcomes maybe and, you, and you, you've got all this but you know if especially if you're someone who has you know you, you've done your your cbt you've done your yoga you've done your reiki and still things aren't quite there mm -hmm. then um, that's the point at which i become a useful person to have about mm -hmm. just because i've kind of played with a lot of stuff myself yeah, yeah I've, I've, I'm the guy I've, uh, you'll find oh, this I found hilarious at one point I, I, I find to, you just a, a minefield of knowledge I mean it's uh, uh, well uh, so this, uh, I, I, at some point I ended up at a druid festival like you do like and, you do. and I had the opportunity and I thought this would be fun I had the opportunity to deliver a workshop on creativity to mm -hmm. druids and the children of druids who are even more fun okay um, and and it's going to be in a yurt. Of course, it's going to be in a yurt. So I've, I go to the yurt, and I'm and I'm getting ready to. Yeah, I want to, I want to kind of get the yurt ready for this audience of druids and little druids that's going to arrive. <laughs> but it's really difficult because there is a large elephant wooden statue there. So hang there on, is. it's a so it's Ganesh. Oh, Ganesh! Now, we love Ganesh. Exactly. So hang on. So on this so Ganesh is supposed to remove obstacles, but on this occasion, Ganesh is the obstacle. And I think that's probably a really good metaphor for what I <laughs> for what I do come to think of it. It's like whatever you think the solution is, yeah. uh, actually maybe sometimes you need to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, whatever you, yeah, it's it's actually, yeah, what the solution is actually often the problem. So Ganesh's remover of obstacles was the obstacle for me running the workshop. So me and a couple of burly druids removed the Ganesh uh, statue and were able to do the workshop as a result. There you go, that's what Brilliant. I Brilliant. Mean. Adrian, <laughs> I love it. I love it all. Amazing, amazing work. So, so just before we wrap up, how can we get in touch with you? Adrianinspires.com is where you'll find me online and uh, you will find full contact details there. You'll, you'll find you know, various adventures that I get up to um, and we may work together and find ways to do that. I, I don't work, work with everyone who would like to work with me and that's fine because if I don't feel that I'm going to be able to serve you well, I will just honestly say that and refer you to someone who, who is better suited to do so. But I do get to work with, yeah, with people where we have some very interesting adventures and um, yeah, we'll, 
try and have some fun along the way as well because I think seriousness is, is kind of one of the biggest problems uh, that we face at this point, he said seriously. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sanita. You, uh, you take care and, um, and uh, we'll chat soon and uh, enjoy your evening, Adrian. All right. Thank you so much. You have...